Welcome with me, Pastor Tanya Vera and Jay, and we are looking at what it means to be blessed. And you know what? Sometimes the word is nice, it's like a sponge and it washes us, but other times it's a little bit tougher. It's like a star borsal, and we are busy with a tough one here. We are looking at Matthew chapter 5, verse 7, that says, Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. And because we have received the mercy of God, therefore we can show mercy towards others. And mercy means giving compassion to somebody. So mercy is for the guilty. You cannot receive mercy from the judge unless you are declared guilty. If you are not guilty, you can't ask for mercy. So if you are self-righteous, mercy is not available to you. Lord, if I have sinned, you know, no mercy. Either you have sinned or you have not sinned. So here's the thing. It is not just forgiveness that we receive when we uh, when it comes to mercy you know when it comes to mercy uh, what is also received is that mercy in our inability to be able to do what god wants us to do where god comes and intervenes and he helps us to accomplish that's mercy to be the husband to be the wife we need to be to be the parents we need to be to be the citizen in the country that we need to be so mercy is not just an emotion it's not just a feeling mercy is action you feeling sorry for somebody doesn't mean um, you know you've been showing mercy getting involved in somebody's life that is showing mercy you know for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son in giving his son he showed us mercy Jesus in dying for us on the cross of Calvary showed mercy God feeling sorry for us well that wouldn't have been mercy that's not compassion that's not mercy that's sympathy and sympathy doesn't help anybody feeling sorry doesn't help anybody so last week we looked at mercy and justice and there's no mercy without justice and we see when we talk about sin there is always a price that has to be paid when it comes to sin so God does not show mercy without punishing sin for him to offer mercy without punishment violates justice. So we still need justice. Mercy that ignores sin is a false mercy. And false mercy is very common in the days that we live in. People say, well, that you are unloving and you are unkind when you hold them accountable. But that's cheap grace. Cheap grace is not justice. Cheap grace is not showing mercy. Why? Because it overlooks sin. It leaves sin undealt with. To abandon justice is to abandon mercy. To overlook sin is to reject truth. So therefore, what needs to happen? There needs to be repentance. And in every act of mercy, every true act of mercy, there is someone who pays the price. In our case, Jesus paid the price for us. That satisfied the justice in that he died for us. And thus, when I show mercy to somebody else, you know, I pay the price for them. There's a price to be paid. I carry your debt. I carry your weight. I absorb your affliction. So there is a price to be paid. And you cannot say when there is mercy, there is no justice. No, that is false. There is a price to be paid. To expect to enter the circle of God's mercy without repentance of our sin is wishful thinking. God's mercy apart from repentance of sin is a false gospel. And therefore 1 John 1 verse 9 says, If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from unrighteousness. If we do what? If we confess our sin. So not cover up, not make an excuse, not self-righteous, right? But He comes when we uh, forgive, when we acknowledge our sin and we confess our sin. He comes, what does He do? He doesn't just forgive, but He cleanses. He changes us. He transforms us. If we want change. See, and some people come and they say, Lord, forgive me, but I don't want to change. The most people I deal with, they want forgiveness, but they don't want to change. Which means they want mercy, but they don't want to show mercy. And that's why Acts 2 uh, verse 38 says, Repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So we need the gift of God, the Holy Spirit within our lives. 
What is repentance? Repentance is 180 degree from the direction I was going uh, with and now saying, Lord, I abhor that. I don't want to be that. And you know, it's not like, oh, you know what? You know why I lost my temper? Because if you didn't do that, then I wouldn't have to do that. If you didn't do that, then, then I wouldn't have, well, no mercy for you. No mercy for you. Stop with the excuses self-righteousness takes so much energy and that's why many people are so tired oh pastor i'm so tired yeah well i mean keeping track of all those excuses and lies it's hard work it's easier to come to the lord and say lord i am done with my rubbish you know stop being instagram christians but be open you know own up to the rubbish and the darkness and come and say lord you know what i look nice there but actually my motive is not so right so come and confess and and repent so that there can be mercy within your life so you come to the lord and he can give you joy and peace and he can restore you he gives you mercy so god's mercy is grounded not only in his love but also in his justice uh, but without being punished and being removed even the least of our sin would eternally separate us from god but the good news and the good news of the gospel is Jesus Christ came and he paid the penalty for our sin. And therefore God shows mercy to all sinners. On the cross of Calvary, Jesus satisfied God's justice. And through faith in that sacrifice, the floodgates of mercy is open over our lives. The good news is that in the shedding of the blood of Jesus, justice was satisfied. Sin was forgiven. Righteousness was fulfilled. And mercy was made available. There is never an excuse for sin, but there is always a solution. And that is Jesus Christ. Jesus is the answer. Amen. So now we're going into today's message. And I was just summarizing uh, some of the stuff we did over the past few weeks so that we do not forget. And I want to start off today, and we're going to start off with a negative. The unmerciful will not receive the mercy of God. Let's start there. You know, David speaks about an unnamed wicked man in the book of Psalm 109. And in verse 14, listen to this. He says, let the iniquity of his fathers be remembered before the Lord. And let not the sin of his mother be blotted out. Let them be continually before the Lord. In other words, he sees them all the time. He says that he may cut off the memory of them from the earth. Now that, you know, how's that for, for a curse, right? And now he continues in verse 16. He says, because he did not remember to show mercy, but persecuted the poor and needy, that he might even slay the broken in heart. So you see, David's anger was not vengeful. It was not retaliatory. But this man did not deserve mercy because they themselves were not merciful. But you see, that's the Old Testament. Let's, let's look at the New Testament. And we're reading in Romans chapter 1 from verse 29 and he is speaking about all those who will not see God now this is a tough verse and these are the people from verse 29 being filled with all unrighteousness sexual immorality wickedness covetousness maliciousness full of envy murder strife uh, deceit evil mindedness they are whisperers in other words they're gossipers backbiters haters of God violent proud boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, mm, undiscerning, untrustworthy, unloving, unforgiving. Then he rounds all of these things of saying unmerciful. Who knowing the righteous judgment of God that those practice such things are deserving of death. Not only do the same, but they approve of those who practice them so that when others do it, they approve of it. So we've got to understand that mercilessness is the crown, uh, the crowning marker in the character of those who reject God's mercy. The crowning character trait of somebody that hasn't received the mercy of God is mercilessness. In other words, they live for themselves. Everything is for me. But here's the issue. If you are your own God, then you are your own savior. And that's why so many people are so full of anxiety, 
always anxious, they are always fearful, always on medication, needing uh, uh, their space, you know, leave me alone, don't place me that expectation on me, I don't want to be accountable, I'm just trying to survive. Yes, you are your own God, and as long as you are your own God, what happens is you don't inhabit the mercy of God. You are not living in the mercy of God. And therefore, because you are not living in the mercy of God, you are so consumed with your own survival that you don't have the ability to show mercy. Consumed with your own self and your own survival, you are merciless. Pastor, I can't. Well, that's why. Um, I don't have the time. I can't win souls. I can't make disciples. I just try to get by. Yes, you are so merciless. You are cruel. I'm just trying to get by, Pastor. Yes, you are cruel. You see, the way to happiness is through mercy. The way to misery is through cruelty. Mercilessness is cruelty. You're consumed with self. It is this vicious circle that goes deeper and deeper and you'll need more medication and more medication and you'll need more help and more help and it doesn't get better until you make the decision to do the Bible and show mercy. You know, getting those who don't know God to get them to know God until you get them to a place where they can show mercy until you start sowing your life you will be a narcissist full of yourself and everything will be trying to just get by trying to make ends meet just trying to get through the day you are merciless you are cruel all you think about is yourself and of course you want some Bible verse for me to prove this right so give me a verse, Pastor, so I'm glad you asked. Let me give you a verse, Proverbs um, chapter 11, verse 7. The merciful man does good for his own soul. So let's talk about mental health. Let's go there today, right? My mental health, Pastor, you know the merciful man, the merciful woman, you know, you want to deal with me mental health? It means showing mercy. It means showing forgiveness. Mercy means getting involved in other people's issues and wants and needs and helping them. That's showing mercy. Getting involved in people's lives. The Bible says when you are winning souls and you are touching people's lives, people that don't know the Lord, getting them to God. When you are getting them to God and people that are struggling within their lives, when you do uh, that, he says it is good for your soul. It is good for your mental health. What's the opposite of that? We continue in that verse. He says, but he who is cruel troubles his own flesh. The opposite of being merciful is being cruel. And you're feeling sorry for yourself and trying just to get by. The Bible says you are cruel. The New Living Translation says your kindness will reward you, but your cruelty will destroy you. The Amplifier says the merciful, the kind and generous. So the psychology of the day now is, you know, look after yourself. Because if you don't look after yourself, you can't take care of others as well. So it first starts with you. No, get to God. Come and acknowledge all your rubbish. And then you come to God and you say, Lord, here I am. I trust you. You created me. I trust your purpose with my life. I give you my life out of myself. I can't do this. I don't have the ability, Lord. Here I am. Lord, the mess that I am. I come before you, Lord, poor in spirit with humility. And then God comes and He shows mercy. When He shows mercy and you receive mercy, now you become merciful and kind and generous. And the Bible says when you are like that, it benefits yourself. When you touch others, God touches you. Are you hearing me here today? It says the merciful, kind and generous man benefits himself for his deeds return to bless him. That's powerful. But he who is cruel and callous to the wants of others bring on himself retribution. So listen, he says here that the truly merciful person is even kind to animals. Who kicked the dog this morning, right? Mm. So listen here. He so said, what do you mean, Pastor? Now, let, give me a verse, right? So Proverbs 12 verse 10, I will give you a verse. A righteous man regards the life of his animal, but the tender mercies of the wicked are cruel. So it is amazing that in other people's lives we want justice, you know. And we come and Jesus warns us 
to those who claim to be children of God, but you don't serve the hungry, you the thirsty, the naked, the sick. People are being convicted in prison and you guys say, you know, let them rot there. But you know what? We, we want justice for them. But it's amazing how you want mercy for yourself. To the full extent of the law, we want that man punished. We want the justice, right? But when we make a mistake, then we want mercy. Are you hearing what I'm saying today? And therefore, what does the Bible say? Matthew chapter 25 verse 41. Then he will also say to those on the left hand, Depart from me, you cursed, into the everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Would you agree with me and understand that that means hell, right? Where's the devil going to? He's going to hell. Where's his angels going to? To hell. He says, For I was hungry and you gave me no food. I was thirsty and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger and you did not take me in. Naked and you did not clothe me. Sick and in prison and you did not visit me. Right? Uh, because you said, Go rot. He says, Verse 44, Then they also will answer him, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not minister to you? Then he will answer them saying, Assuredly I say to you, inasmuch as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. I think every one of us can shout out to you, help us Jesus, right? Now let me close off. The book of James chapter 2 verse 13 says, For judgment is without mercy to the one who has shown no mercy. Mercy triumphs over judgment. For whoever, says verse 10, shall keep the whole law and yet stumble in one point, he is guilty of all. So if you've made a mistake and the Bible says if you've stolen, then the Bible says you are a murderer as well. You know, you have failed in the law in one little thing. Now you fail in the whole law. You're guilty in it all. He says, verse 11, For he who said, do not commit adultery, also said, do not murder. Now, if you do not commit adultery, but you do murder, you have become a transgressor of the law. So it doesn't matter what law you broke. You are disobedient. You broke the law. Verse 12, he says, So speak and so do as those who will be judged by the law of liberty. For judgment is without mercy to the one who shows no mercy. Mercy triumphs over justice. That is the good news. Let me read the Amplified. For judgment will be merciless to the one who has shown no mercy. But to the one who has shown mercy, mercy triumphs victoriously over judgment. Hallelujah. Say with me. To the one who has shown mercy, mercy triumphs victoriously over judgment. See, in the midst of our corrupt, ego, self-centered society that teaches us to just grab and take everything you can get your hands on and just take and just keep, the voice of God is saying rather to give everything we can, to give it away. The true character of mercy is in your generosity. It's in your giving, giving compassion, giving help, giving time, giving forgiveness, giving money, giving ourselves. The children of the Most High are merciful and those who are merciless face judgment. But mercy triumphs over judgment. To the one who has shown mercy, mercy triumphs victoriously over judgment. And therefore, just where you are, let us become of the way, aware of the presence of God this, this afternoon or morning, wherever you are. And examine your heart. Check your heart. You know, and I'm not preaching down on anybody because I need God just as anybody else. So many times we find ourselves where we are merciless just because we feel we are unable to help others because we don't have the capacity, which is a lie. You only receive capacity when you do. When you step out, when you help, God comes immediately and He gives you that capacity. Then mercy increases, mercy abounds, mercy increases your capacity. You want to break out of depression? Start giving. You want to break out of anxiety and fear? Start loving. Put your life on the line. Put your body on the line. Put your soul on the line. Put your reputation on the line and say, Lord, I don't care how I feel. I don't care about myself. I trust you, Lord. I will love others. I will help others. I will show mercy by getting involved. And just there where you are, I want you to pray this prayer, Psalm 51, as David had prayed. And I want you just to say these words and repeat after me. Lord, 
have mercy upon me according to your unfailing love according to your tender mercies blot out my transgressions wash me thoroughly from my sin and cleanse me from my guilt i acknowledge my sin it troubles me i don't want to be like this against you lord i have sinned and committed evil in your sight i was born a sinner but i'm open and i'm honest before you lord Purify me and I will be clean. Wash me and I will be whiter than snow. Wash my sins. Create within me a clean heart, O God. Renew a loyal spirit, a steadfast spirit, a committed spirit. I need your presence. I need your Holy Spirit. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and help me to obey you lord and then lord i will testify of your goodness i will help other sinners to be converted to your love i will teach transgressors your way i will be generous and show mercy through who i am because of your mercy you have shown towards me in jesus name come on just where you are just give a shout of praise and say hallelujah thank you jesus for your mercy thank you that we can also show mercy and i want to encourage you this week go and see where you can show mercy where you can give to others where you can step out that the mercy of god can increase within your own love in your giving in your time in your help wherever it might be your your generosity get out there and just start doing it you know face if you are fearful, face those fears and conquer those fears through the blood of Jesus and say, today I'm going to spend time with this person. Today I'm going to help that person. I'm going to phone that person. I'm going to show mercy. And you know what? That comes from the love of God within you. And you will see how God's going to increase the mercy. He's going to increase your capacity within your life. God bless you.